Hi gang, in this video, we're going to make bar tacks and buttonholes so you can continue to add more elements to your symbols library. But before we get started, I'd really appreciate it if you'd give me a like, and if you're not already subscribed, now would be a great time to do that. All right, let's get started. Bar tacks are these little tight groups of stitches that are added to garments for extra strength and support. They're put on stress areas. So you'll most often find them on your belt loops. You'll find them at the ends of pockets. You will also find them on the fly on jeans. They can be done in contrast colors to make them part of a decorative aspect of the garment or in the same color so they're not particularly noticeable. But they're a very important part of garment construction and it's a good idea to have them in your symbols library. So let's get to making some. I always prefer to create my symbols to scale so that I don't have to do any editing or sizing when I drag them out to use them on my flat. So let's do that. We're going to start with the line segment tool. I'll click on the tool, click once on the page to bring up the dialog box. We are going to make a line segment that is five points long with an angle of zero degrees and click OK. And as you can see, it's pretty small. We want to go to our stroke panel and make sure that the stroke weight is 0.25 and that we have round caps and round corners because needles make round holes. I'm going to zoom in much closer so we can actually see what's going on here. Now all we have to do is put one effect on this to turn it into a bar tack. We're going to go up to Effect, Distort and Transform, Zigzag. When that window opens up, you're going to see it looks terrible, but that's okay. We're going to leave the size setting to absolute, but we're going to change the point size to 0.5 so it's much smaller. And let's turn preview off and back on so we can see what it looks like. Now the scale is much more appropriate. We're going to slide the ridges per segment slider to the right until we're happy with the look of it. I don't want it so tight that it looks like a solid black blob. I don't think that reads really well on flats. I like a little bit of breathing room, but not that much. So for me, it looks good about here. And I want you to be aware of something. Whenever you use an even number, it starts above the line and it ends below the line. But if I were to change this to an odd number, it starts and ends above the line for both sides. Now for certain things that you're creating, you're going to want it to start and end in the same place. But for bar tacks, I personally like the look better when I use an even number, and so that's what I'm going to do. This can either be set to smooth or corner. It doesn't make a very big difference. It just sort of thickens it up a little bit, and because I want it to have a little bit of breathing space, I'm going to stick with corner. Click OK, and you have just created a bar tack. Now we're going to add it to our symbols. So let's just click on the Add a Symbol icon. We're going to name it Bar Tack, and I'll usually put five point after it so I know what size bar tack it is. You might find that you have another project that needs a shorter or longer bar tack and this way you can differentiate between the two. Click OK and we have created our bar tack. The next thing we're going to do is our buttonholes. So here are the three types we're going to create. We're going to create this type of buttonhole that you will find on denim jeans. We're going to create a pretty basic standard buttonhole, and we are going to do a keyhole buttonhole, which is good for heavier fabrics like wool coats. Now let's get started. Again, I want to make sure that I draw these to scale. So I'm going to drag out a button to work with. I just so happen to have a shank button for a pair of jeans. So we're going to pull that out. We're going to zoom in super close so we can see what we're doing, and we're going to create our buttonhole. Now, denim buttonholes are super easy to create. We're going to draw a little loop shape with the pen tool and apply the same effect that we applied onto our bar tack. With the pen tool, we want to make sure that the buttonhole is the size of our button. So I'm going to draw it right on top of the button. I'm going to click on one side, go to the other side, just straight across. You can even hold your shift key to make sure it's straight. And then I'm going to click and drag straight up and down and that's going to create my curve. Then I'll go back and click where I started. 
Now, I like the look of this sometimes if it has just a little bit of a tail. So I'm going to click one more time out just a tiny bit in line with this other anchor point. And it wanted to start a new line, which is fine. I'm just going to go back and connect it to the end of my little loop. I'll select both those pieces and I'm going to move them out of the way so that they're not on top of the button anymore. Like before, we want to make sure that there's no fill on this and that our stroke weight is 0.25 round round. And now we can go up and add our effect. But this time, since we've already used the effect, we don't have to go effect, distort and transform, zigzag. We can just go up here. If you click on the one on top, it's going to apply the exact same zigzag that we applied before and not give us the menu to adjust it. So you can see it just applies it. But that particular sizing doesn't look like it's working for me here. So I'm going to undo it. I think a better option, and I want to do these separately, so we're going to do the loop first. A better option is to go up to effect, and this time you're just going to click on the one right below it. So not apply zigzag, but zigzag. This is going to apply the last zigzag I used, but it's also going to open up the options box so I can adjust it for this particular use. And as you can see in this case, it's really not dense enough. So I'm going to take my slider and I'm just highlighting it and using the up arrow on my keyboard to keep nudging it up until I like the density of the zigzag on my buttonhole. And I think that one looks pretty good, so I'm going to click OK. And now we're going to click this little tab here and do the same thing. But it's going to be too big if I use the one I just used. So again, we're going to go Effect Zigzag, and we can adjust it. And you can see it's much too dense. So we're going to lower this down quite a bit. And let's flip Preview off and back on. And it's still much too dense. So we'll go even smaller. And I think that's going to work out pretty nicely. We'll click OK. And there is my buttonhole for the jeans. Again, you're going to select the entire buttonhole, go over to your symbols panel, click the add a symbol or new symbol button. And this is our first buttonhole. I don't know the correct name for this particular style of buttonhole, but if any of you do, please write it in the comments for me because I would really like to know. So I've got it labeled buttonhole, but I'm calling it jean buttonhole and click OK. So there's another symbol for my library. The next we are going to do a basic button for a shirt. So we'll drag that out. You can see it's a little bit of a smaller button than the one I use on the jeans. And we're going to create a buttonhole for this. This time, we're going to start with the rectangle tool. And we're going to draw a rectangle that's just a little bit bigger than the button. And this is a visual. There's not really a specific size. It just needs to be a little larger than your button. But if you're interested, the one I just drew was 6.4 points wide and one point tall. We'll cancel that. And again, it has no fill. And it has a black stroke that is set to round round and 0.25 for the weight. Let's move it next to the button and work on it. Now we're going to do this one a little bit differently. We're going to use the same zigzag, but we're not going to put it all the way around. What we're going to do is take the white arrow, select the two center pieces. We're going to cut it, Control or Command X for cut and then paste in front, Control or Command F for front. And now they're still selected, so we're going to go up to Effect, Zigzag, and we're going to make a few changes here. So we can see that 0.5 in this case is really big, so we might want to take this number down just a little bit. Whoops, not to zero. All right, we're going to have to type it in. So let's try um, 0.3 on this one and see if that's a little bit better. And it is. Now they're not crisscrossing each other. And we'll go ahead and play with the ridges per segment. And again, I'm just hitting my up arrow, my nudge key, which is the up arrow. But it helps if we have preview turned on so we can see what it looks like. And I'm just going to keep hitting my up arrow until I like the look of this. 
So we're going to keep it on the dent side. And because I want them to start and end at the same place this time, we are going to make sure that we use an even number so that they're all starting and ending at the same place. I'm pretty happy with the way 33 looks, so I'm going to click OK. And you'll notice now that the ends are all kind of ending out. Now the last thing I want to do is add just a couple of set stitches on the end and that's why we didn't use this around the end because it would have been putting the zigzags in a different direction. With the pen tool, I'm just going to click to connect to one of my outer lines and just go down and back up and down. And that looks very odd because it appears to have connected, can you see that, to my horizontal line and we do not want that to happen. So I'm going to undo this and we're going to do it one more time to make sure that it doesn't connect. So I'm going to, I accidentally command Z to one too many. So we're going to use command shift Z to restore what I had. And now let's zoom in a little closer so we can see it better. And maybe I don't need to connect to this, but I can just kind of randomly draw a line. So we're going to put one that goes right from there to here. We just want to make sure that we don't connect it to the line on the other side. And we'll go up and then back down. So we get a little set stitch on the end. And now we can just grab this, hold your Alt or Option key, and just drag it off to the other side so we have a matching one on either edge. And there is our buttonhole. Now it feels a little bit out of alignment to me. So one last thing I'm gonna do is select these two pieces, right click, group, and now I'm gonna select all of them and we're going to go to the Align palette, and I'm going to align them this way, center top, so that they're all nicely in line with each other. And that is my buttonhole. I will take the buttonhole, add a new symbol, and here is my buttonhole, and click OK. We have one last buttonhole to do, and that is going to be the keyhole buttonhole. So for that one, I'm going to drag out my leather coat button, which is significantly larger than the shirt button. And we are going to go ahead and make a buttonhole for this one. We're going to start with a rectangle that can be just the size of this button. So it's going to be about like that. And now let me move this out of the way. To make this a keyhole, we're going to need to add a circle to it. So we're going to switch to the ellipse tool, and I'm going to start right on the center of this path, hold my Alt and Shift key, and drag out a circle that is just a little bit larger than the rectangle. Now we need to unite them together, so we'll select both pieces and use Pathfinder Unite, which is the one on the upper left corner and now we have one solid shape. Just like before, we want to make sure that it has no fill. The stroke is round, round, and set to 0.25. Let's go back up to the top and try our last zigzag and see how it works. And we have a very different thing happening this time. Because of the way the anchor points are situated on this particular rectangle, we get a very open zigzag here, but a very tight one on each end. And I'm not happy with the look of that. So let's do something a little bit better. I'm gonna cancel this out. I'm gonna grab my white arrow and select straight down the middle so I get just these two longer horizontal lines. I'm gonna cut them again, Control or Command X, and then paste in front, Control or Command F for front. Whoops, paste in front. Why aren't you doing that? Sometimes, you know, Illustrator just doesn't do what you want it to. Let's try it again. Cut, Control or Command X. Perfect. Paste in front, Control or Command F. There you go. Now we're going to go back up to Effect and apply Zigzag. And remember, we made it smaller for the other button. I want to go back to 0.5 because I think that's going to be a better size for this buttonhole. We can turn Preview on and off to see how it looks. We could even possibly go, no, that looks good to me. But I do think we need to add more ridges. So let's highlight the ridges per segment number and I'm using my up arrow on the keyboard to 
nudge up a few additional points. All right, so we've got this. I've got it on, uh, in this case, it's on an even number, so they both start and end at the same place, and I'm going to click OK. Now let's select the circular part using the black arrow, and we're going to do the same thing. Effect, zigzag. And this time you can see it's way too dense. So we will select it and use the down arrow key to lower the number of zigzags. Except, of course, we need to turn preview on and off just to make sure we can actually see what's going on. There we go. So we are going to make this a little bit less dense. Because of the nature of this, it's always going to look a little bit off because there's more space between anchor points over here than there is on this little section. So let's take a look at it. This is going to look fine on your flats. I mean, there's no reason for it not to, but if you're interested, and you really enjoy making these things perfect like I do, then we might as well do a little bit more. So let's undo the last thing that we did. And instead of doing this whole thing as one piece, let's do it as a couple of separate pieces. I'm going to select this piece, hold my shift key, and select this piece over here. I'm going to cut them. So Control or Command X to cut. And then one more time, paste in front. Control or Command F for front. Let's go back to Effect, Zigzag, and we are going to lower the number to make this look a little bit less dense. And I think that will work. Click OK. Now let's select the other piece and we'll add the zigzag to that. Effect, Zigzag. And this time, of course, we're going to have to add some more so that we get a more consistent look going all the way around our curve. And I think this looks much nicer. Now the last thing is to deal with this end. So I'm just going to go ahead, I'll delete that one, and we'll just draw a new piece at the end. With the pen tool, I'm just going to start here, go down to here, and we're just going to make a couple of clicks to finish off this edge with a little set stitch. Let me zoom in a little bit closer and tweak this because I don't like the way I did that. So I'm going to grab this and just nudge this over a tiny bit. That's better. And this needs to come down just a little bit. And with the pen tool, we are going to put one more kind of right in the middle because that feels more balanced to me. And there is our final keyhole buttonhole. Again, we're going to select it and make a new symbol. So now you've got some great additions to your symbol library. If you don't already have the set of buttons created, no problem. I will leave a link to that video down below for you. So go forth and draw buttons and draw buttonholes and add them to your symbols library because you're going to need them in a couple of weeks when I put up my how to draw jeans video, which is coming soon. So make sure you've got your double needle top stitch ready and all these other elements so you can follow along. I hope you learned something new in this video. If so, I'd really appreciate a like, and I will see you next time. Bye.